Now, I'm getting chairs because this will be a little bit longer and, you know, it's my birthday this week and my legs aren't as young as they used to be. (laughs) How's your legs, Don? Good so far. Yeah, good. Good so far. Oh. They've given you volume. Now, uh, so, so Don celebrated an anniversary in terms of uh, coming to know Jesus back in July, I think. And uh, sadly, we missed telling your story on your anniversary, so, so a few months later. But Don really wanted to share uh, the difference God has made in his life and the people as well that have contributed, contributed to uh, him following Jesus. And we think that one of your friends, at least one, or at least one, at of, least your, one. of your friends is watching now. So what, what's his name? Uh, Dave. Yeah, Dave. And the other one's Paul, which I'm not sure if Paul's dialed in. Okay. So, uh, so we're, even if you watch this later, we're, we're going to mention Dave and Paul a bit later. Um, I uh, want to begin by asking you, uh, Don... How did God get your attention? Okay, it's a good start. So, um, just a bit of background, which will go a long time, but uh, to be brief, I was born in Chicago, grew up in Orange, California, and after high school, I, um, I went up to Idaho to play baseball. I was on a baseball scholarship. I was there for a couple of years, and then the school dropped baseball as a sport. And Washington State University, which was just across the border, they, they gave me a scholarship to finish my college there. So I, after I finished playing baseball and I still had a little bit of time to go in university, I, was, I got a job painting a house with, with a couple of guys. It was, and it was a, it's a rural community, farmland, gorgeous area, great for people that like hunting and fishing, which me and my mates all did. So we had a job in the summer um, painting this house, and, and I happened to be painting with a fellow named Dave Gressard, and Dave was a, and both of these guys went to the same high school as me in Southern California, so it was amazing that they made their way up to Idaho and then Washington. Well, Idaho is where we were, just about eight miles away from where the Washington State University was, but in Idaho, technically. So anyway, Dave was a great diver in university, in uh, high school, so he had credibility in my eyes because he was a great sports person. And Paul was an all-American wrestler in high school and in college. Again, great credibility in my eyes because sports people were, you know, as I guess with a lot of young people, sports people hold high esteem, and they certainly did with me. And um, so we were painting this house for two weeks, and, like, I lived with Dave for a while in in a trailer park, and, I mean, Dave was a great guy great life. You could tell he was just an honorable, good guy. Um, I didn't believe what he believed, but, you know, he was, he was a good fella. And Paul, I didn't really know Paul a lot, but when we were painting this house, and I don't even remember what the question was, but I think it was like, what do you think will happen when you die? And, I mean, this was, so we had two weeks, just the three of us together, and really made me think about stuff. And look, I'm, I, wasn't in a, I wasn't in a desperate state. I wasn't uh, downcast. I was, life was good. I, I wasn't searching for anything that, that I knew of. But the time with these guys was, was me asking questions. At night, I'd go home, and I would read my little, and I don't know where I got it, but I had a little Gideon's Bible. Shout out to Bevan there, who used to be a, a Gideon's distributor. But... Uh, so I'd go home and, and read the little Gideon's Bible, and then I'd go back to work the next day painting the house, and I'd have lots of questions to ask these guys, and they had most of the answers as far as I could remember, but it was their lives that really stood out to me. And as I say, they had credibility because of who they were, so they weren't, no offense anybody, they weren't weak Christian church-going people. They were people of strength and character, which, which all of you are as well, but you don't know until you get to know people. So that's, that's very good. So that's the start of it. So they, they commended following Jesus by the lives they lived and, and the words, and the words, they words they that shared, they said. And the words they shared, the uh, stories so they told. So how did you, what was the, was there a decision point for you? 
or was it a gradual thing? Well, I guess if you can call it two weeks gradual, yes, it was, uh, it was the two weeks. So, and I don't even remember why we finished after two weeks because I think we did a lousy job in the house, and I'm not sure we actually finished the house. It was a big, big place. But um, so this is on a Friday afternoon. It was the 24th of July, and, and I was leaving the car park from the house, and, and I just pulled over. I was in the car by myself, and I just asked God to come into my heart and that I believed in Jesus with all my heart and I asked him to come in and make a difference so that that's the catalyst and then if I can go on from there there was a few things that immediately happened now this, this might sound silly but one of them was I stopped foul language I mean that sounds crazy I tried I believe it I, 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 you tried I had swearing. tried to stop because I, uh, you, I thought it was you know oh, you I didn't did think try it was appropriate stop. yeah yeah throughout Throughout the previous year or two, I'd been trying to stop foul language. But it just happened immediately. So a small thing, but it was powerful and something I'll never forget. And then on the Sunday, so the Sunday I went to church. That's the first time I'd gone to church for ages. So, so had you grown up in a church-going family? Uh, sort of, probably a few times a year. Um, okay. I went to, um, well, I guess I was part of a youth group when I was early teens, kind of rebelled against that, didn't really, didn't really appreciate having to go to Sunday school and uh, youth group. But um, I learned a lot of stories out of the Bible. I learned a lot, you know, you, you do Bible studies, you, you learn about things. It's not personal, it doesn't mean a lot, but it's a story that you remember. Um, I was, I was, went through confirmation as well as part of it, but that again wasn't anything personal, it was more it was almost like a test, I guess. You just pass a few things and you get confirmed. Uh, so, yes, I had gone to church and, and Sunday school a bit growing up. But then when I went to church on this Sunday after I'd become a Christian, I can't even describe what this was like. It was amazing. And it was in Pullman, Washington, which is where the university was. And... And look, the pastor wasn't trying to big note himself, but he, he was talking about the opportunities that awaited him in university if he chose to go that way. Like he could have been a, an aeronautical engineer. Where's Ray? Where, wherever Ray's he is. online. He's Ray. online. Yeah, so, so again, he had credibility in my eyes because here's a guy that had the world at his feet, and yet he chose the life of service to God. So that's one thing. But the, the main thing was, when we started reading the Bible, it was like God grabbed my shoulders, looked right into my eyes, and said, I'm talking to you. Unforgettable. Unforgettable. So it's been like that ever since. It's been like that ever since, that reading God's word is a personal dialogue. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And the third thing was, and I never wanted to be around Christian people before, not that I disliked them, but didn't think I had anything <laughs> in common with them. But... All of a sudden, it was like fellowship opened up. Like there was at university a group called the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, which was right up my alley. Right up my alley. People that loved God, good at sports, loved their sports, normal people. And so that gave, that gave me a real foothold to, to go forward in my faith to grow in the early days. Did you have any challenges? There's lots of high points. Were there any challenges? And how, how did you get through that? Oh, well, there's, uh, there's always challenges. I think we all, we all go through forks of the road, you know, whether it's decision-making or, you know, situations forced upon you. So, but I always, I always just get back to the Bible. It's really God's word, things that ingrained in my heart. And believe it or not, there's, there's a lot of people within this church and outside this church, including my family. I've got... I think I've got some great, great high school mates that are dialing in today that, that, and beyond high school, like in early years. So just friends that reach out and people that you get to talk to and you, you just confide in. And, and then people in this church, as I say, and there's some, some great folks in this church that I've become friends with. And, you know, they, sometimes people, they understand the role they play in each other's lives and sometimes they don't. But it's very real the position that people take in one another's lives. So 
uh, that's, that's kind of helped me throughout the years. Very good. You actually um, I, it were a professional uh, base. Uh, base. I, I, I don't know what word to use. But anyway, you were paid to play baseball and you came to Australia and uh, met somebody, married, had a, had a family. You've been in Australia for how many years? A long time. Longer than I was in the U.S. Yeah, I've been here a long time. And yes, I was sponsored to play baseball. Sponsored, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you're clearly good enough to play in Australia, which... How many baseball fans in the room here? Oh, oh there's, there's two. Where are you, Owen? <laughs> <laughs> Three. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, and you came to Australia and this becomes your home. Get married, have a family. Uh, talk to me about how your faith worked out from that point. Okay, so I thought it was a step of faith to come here, even because I hadn't played for a few years when I, my brother rang me. He was here sponsored to play basketball. So he was playing with one of the local district clubs, basketball. And he happened to go to the baseball grand final, and he, and he rang me right after the game and said, look, I just went to the grand final. I reckon you could still get a game. What do you think? I, I'll... So I thought, why not? What a great opportunity to spend time with Jeff, because Jeff and I are we're tight as tight can be. We're just the best of mates as well as brothers. I'm, I'm fortunate I'm that way with my sister as well. But um, so anyway, I thought, I thought this is, this is a great opportunity to go to Australia. Didn't know anything about Australia, but um, so then I came here. The club asked me to stay again, play another year. Then another club asked me to come and play for them. And, we happened to win the premiership that year, so they asked me to come back. And so, I, you know, I'm like a bad smell. I just won't go away. <laughs> so and then I met Melinda through the baseball club, and then, and that's why I've been here ever since. You have two boys? Two boys, yeah. Chris and Brad. Yep. Chris is 22. Brad's 20. Great kids. Great kids. Now, in those years, uh, there was a point where you disconnected from going to church. From what I understand, you didn't disconnect from faith. Yep. Um, so what, 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 was, what were those years like for you in terms of your faith? So my, my view had, was, and this was conscious, right? It's conscious that you don't go to church. It's, it's not just an accident. So my, my conscious thinking was my relationship with God is personal and individual. I don't need to be a part of a church to experience a deep relationship with God. Now... I still believe that to be true. But what's, what I've found as a result of not being a part of, of a church family for so long is God's given us fellowship for a reason, right? So yes, there's, the relationship is, is with Jesus and with God and with his Holy Spirit. But we all form an important part of helping one another get through the daily challenges of life. And so even, even a small thing like the online service, as good as that was, I found that to be a little bit isolating and too distant. Mm. So it's, it's a real blessing to be back um, amongst flesh and blood. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, in your story, you've already emphasized how important people were both for you to come to faith and also to, in university to stay and thrive in faith. So... You, it is interesting that you'd concluded that it was personal and individual and you didn't need necessarily people. What? If I can jump in there, I think yeah. that was because early days I thought it was just a, 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 well, first of all, God just provided those opportunities, but I think it was more an understanding, awareness that I was new as a Christian. And then later on, I probably thought I'm, I'm big enough and ugly enough, I can do this on my own. So, mm. yeah, I think that was more what it was. It, it, if I'm going to put it poorly, it sounds like adolescence. Probably. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you think you can do everything. Sorry. <laughs> but you can think you can do everything by yourself. Uh, it's not true. But um, No, it's not look, true. Look, you started coming back to church, I'm not exactly sure, it would be about four years ago. Is, is that correct? Yeah. Yep, uh, yep. Uh, what, what drew you back? Uh, well, um, I know Jeff Higgins' brother, Roger, and, um, well, uh, clearly I know Jeff now as well, but, and, and one of their parents had passed away, 
And so I went, I went to the service, which was, which was here in Adelaide. And so, and I met Neil. And, you know, Neil's just a, he's a big personality, friendly guy and outgoing. And so got to talking with him. And so I came here maybe a handful of times over the following year or two. And then, and then I, very irregular and very sporadic, but then probably three years ago. And again, realizing that life is a hard thing to walk through on your own. And, and, and not, not on my own without the Lord at my side, but on my own without the fellowship of other Christians and, and like-minded people. And so, so it was... And you realize that life's challenges are difficult to overcome on your own, impossible to overcome on your own, and, and not necessary to try and overcome on your own. So I, that's when I started coming here on a, on a really regular basis, about three years ago, I guess. Mm-hmm. How long have you been here? It's just, uh, I think yeah, it's just after. Three and a half. Just so. after you'd started, yeah. 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 We, love, we love seeing you around the place, mate. He's uh, on the door. Good smile, don't you reckon? Good welcome, mm-hmm. and a big heart for people. So it's been a real blessing to have you as part of our church. Thanks. Same Over here. this last year, how how would you say God has been faithful in your life? Oh, well, again, there's uh, there's there's forks in the road of life, and um, sometimes you're not sure how to how to go through some of these forks and challenges. But so again, people. God puts people in my path to, to help me and encourage me. You know, there's just... I won't name anybody because there's just too many to name, but there's a lot amongst you who have encouraged me. So uh, you get encouraged to, to just keep going with... And look, I didn't have you no know, life or death situation. Nothing, nothing as drastic as that. But... Um, just sometimes you need to know that you're, you're cared for, you're important, and, and so friends. And God's always telling me through Scripture, I, it's always just in my mind, things to reflect on that remind me that no matter how, how you're feeling up here, down here, somewhere in the middle, you know, God's always there. So those, lots of constant reminders, lots of constant reminders. Just to finish, what would you say are the best, some of the best things about knowing Jesus? Uh, well, certainty is, is a big one. Certainty is, is really important. And if I was to look back on my life, I, I, don't, I would never say that I was an atheist. I probably, like there's, there's just far too much order in the world to be anything other than created. And, um, but it didn't really... Uh, mean a lot to me, but um, what was your question again? It was about, the best things about knowing Jesus. The best things about knowing Jesus is knowing that he's always there. And one of the things that I'm, I feel for the world at the moment is there is just so much confusion and noise and chaos and a lot of uncertainty in the world, but yet through my faith, I can cut through all that. And look, it's hard. It's not like it's, I'm always laser focused. It's not that at all. But I know God's always laser focused on me. And so to have that faith is, is reassuring in what's currently some really unsettling time. So, um, so my, my hope for, for everybody is, look, I, it's not for me to, for, to make people become a Christians, but I hope people really have, as I did many years ago, a real urge to seek and understand God because he'll be there and he'll answer. So just knowing that he's there for me has is, is been really powerful, really powerful, and continues to be. Well, thank you, John. It's um, evident your passion and love for Jesus, your love for mm. our church mm. too. We're very grateful to see that. Uh, as I've already said, we love having you around you. and your, your extraordinary blessing in many ways. Um, especially the non-tangible ways. So, you know, you don't need a job to be a blessing to others, and you're a great example of that. I'm going to pray just as to finish. Pray together. 
Oh God, thank you that many years ago there were a couple of brave young men who shared their faith in Jesus with Don. Thank you that you were at work in his life and he was open to hearing and as he sought, he found you. I love this little passage in, uh, I think it's Second Chronicles, where one of the prophets, Azariah, says, um, if you seek him, he'll be found by you. And that's been true in Don's life. Thank you that he knows there is a laser focus from the God of the universe on his cares and concerns. The reason he has confidence in this is because not only did Jesus teach it, but also Jesus demonstrated to him through his death and resurrection for Don's sin and shame, for all of our sin and shame, that we all matter, especially lost people. Thank you that Don has experienced that and lived in that for all these years. Lord, he's said so many things which have brought you glory and honour. So we want to respond and pray a prayer of blessing for Don, that he might even know more abundant life, that your word, which speaks to him in a powerful way, that your word might have words of life that give him increasing clarity, and that his life may be good for others. I pray that he might be like his friends all those years ago, able to witness in action and in word to the amazing grace that we know in Jesus. And I pray that he might see people he loves, people he meets, he might see them come to know you. So we commit a brother to you, we give thanks for your work in his life, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's thank Don.